Tom, the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 16 to 17. And Jack and Joel will come out and uh, lead today's scripture for worship. Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by, by man, but by my Father in heaven. Hello. Hello. Good Sunday. Uh, and how was your week? Good. <laughs> your life is fine. Yeah. From Wednesday to Friday last week. There was a special Bible worship filled with words and prayers. I think it must have been a lot of a challenge to the good words uh, to the invited pastor. Uh, and especially this week, there was a special dawn prayer worship in the dormitory of my university. So for me, this week was a full time with the words. I hope that uh, we will be an EM community uh, that holds on the words when we don't know where to go and when we lose the power to live. Uh, for those of who are tired to life, this week was a full. Uh, the only thing that gives strength is the word of God. I believe that God has given us a new strength, the words he has given us. May his heart be with all of us who worship today. More than we thought, worship is a very interactive event. It may seem that people just gather in one place and are praising God. Uh, but in that short time, we have a very close relationship with Him. We first raise glory to God with praise and prayer, and He speaks to us through our mouth. And He joins us in the place of worship to bring about an amazing change of our heart. And the worship does not end here. Our response to the words and grace must be at the end of the worship. Uh, one of that is the is the offerings of what we give him. And we are going to talk about another things today. It is the profession of faith, 신앙 고백. Uh, profession of faith is the recognition and confession for God and the gospel of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit with our bodies and hearts. One of the most popular profession is the Apostles Creed. Which we know really well and have confessed just before. And the other is the Nicene Creed. This confession, uh, called the Nicene Constantinople Creed, is a confession of faith adopted by the Council of Constantinople in uh, 381. Uh, it's very wrong, but uh, the content currently recognized by our denomination 
is as follows. Uh, this is also not uh, much different from the Apostles Creed, right? That we have confessed. What's surprising is that this profession of faith did not come from a praise in the Bible. When compared with the uh, Rose Prayer, uh, we can clearly see the difference. Unlike the Lord's Prayer, the profession of faith seems to lack of a little bit of importance. So, what does this compassion, which has been completed after the Bible era, mean to us? Why do we make this confession in worship? What we led today is the very famous confession of Peter to the disciples who accompanied with Jesus and have already experienced the many miracles he caused and his declaration of the kingdom of God. Jesus asked directly about the question they had. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They refer to the names of prophets, such as John the Baptist, Eliza, and Jeremiah, as they have heard from many people. Jesus then directs the question to his disciples. But what about you? He said, asked, Who do you say I am? The question was asked to all the disciples, but only Peter answered. Um, scholars provide the following arguments as the reason of it. First, because Peter was the best out of all the disciples. And second, because they already had a unified opinion. After spending many years with Jesus, they had already discussed their questions together and reached a conclusion. And Peter confessed this conclusion that was reached on behalf of the disciples. This confession is one of the central points of the book of Matthew. Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was a remarkable confession. What makes this confession different from the prophet is that they recognize Jesus as a Messiah who also transforms life in the present time. Not a prophet who prepares for the future. Christ is called as Christus in Greek, which means the person who is anointed. And this anointed person is called as the Son of God, acknowledging that he is more than human. This profession of faith is a name that, that would never be tolerated at this time, and after Jesus was captured, he is asked about the name, same name, by the high priest. But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. 
However, the disciples who joined Jesus in his actions and confirmed that he is the Messiah were forced to confess what they had heard and seen. Dear members of Hong Kong English Ministry, we witness countless work of God and His voice in our lives. He is our strength when we are in need and comfort when our hearts are broken. It is also His grace that we have been alive so far and without the gospel of Jesus Christ, we would still be wandering and sin without knowing God. It is God's works that we can gain new strengths in the world given every day and live properly as Christian. Even if we don't experience personal special events, through all these things, we can discover God. So all that is left is our meditation. What conclusions do we come to do all these things? If we regard these amazing things that have happened to us as just natural things, or as our abilities, our faith will stop there. But when we acknowledge that all this has been done by God's grace and by the gospel of Jesus, praise and gratitude must spring from our mouths. And like Peter in today's word, the compassion you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, should come out. This is a very natural process. Sometimes we can doubt the gospel of Jesus, like, just like Thomas. But I'm sure uh, Jesus comes to our lives and tell us personally, when we hear the bad, bad voice, we will be able to give this confession of heart like Thomas. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. May we all discover Jesus among all that happens in our lives and recognize him as the true Messiah. Then, how does Jesus evaluate Peter's confession? Here's the words of verse 17 of today's scripture. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. First, Jesus tells Peter, who made this profession of faith, blessed. And immediately after that, he explains why this is a blessed one. Jesus said that Peter's uh, confession, a broadly a confession of all disciples, is not a confession that can be made through simple human thought. Of course, Jesus' action after this event were quite different from the image of the Messiah that his disciples thought. Therefore, Jesus ordered disciples who did not yet know his faith to notify that he is Christ. However, Jesus also said that it was God's work in heaven that recognized him as God's son with the name of Christ in their mouth. Uh, 
This means that if God were not with them, their mouth would not have made a profession of faith that recognized Jesus as a Messiah. In other words, again, this profession of faith expresses Christ the Messiah, God revealed to disciples. And therefore, it can be said that there is a blessing in itself to make such a confession. Why should we confess our faith? Shouldn't we keep faith only in our hearts? We can get two answers from uh, today's word. First one, uh, first one is because it is our natural response, as we shared earlier. And the second is because the profession of faith is God's work. We should not consider only human beings as subject of the confession of faith, even though we confess with our lips. Of course, humans are the subject of that action, action itself, but God's grace is in the whole process of making us confess our faith by opening our mouths. We realize that how great God's work is when we see the amazing history and plans He has revealed to us. We would not have declared our faith as a cry of wonder if we had not been for God's revelation. Therefore, Christians who believe in God must confess their faith. Dear members of Hong Kong Christian history, when we confess our faith in this world, God is honored. And this confession should not be made only in churches. As Peter proudly confessed, we should be able to proudly proclaim our faith in this world. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. This profession of faith is made up of many accumulation of confessions of countless people who have received God's revelation. Therefore, we must hold on to this compassion. Jesus said, Blessed are Peter, who was not afraid of the confession of faith. And this Peter later became the first fruit of the gospel of the Gentiles. God also works through our profession of faith. I hope that all of us will experience God's work in life and are not afraid of confess that amazing love and gospel. May today's word be with all of us who determine to change the world by confessing the love of God and the gospel of Jesus that we have experienced with our lips forever. Amen. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us and protecting us during our week and making us gather here and worship with all our heart. We live all our lives to God who is pleased with our praise and prayers and who pour words of grace into us. 
Let this faith not change. And let this faith not be lost in the world outside the church. Thus, we hope that our faith will be confessed through our lips. Like Peter, let us do not be afraid in probing what we have seen and heard. And let us realize that we have been blessed by God by making this confession. We believe the Lord to work through this confession. Please receive our prayer and request gladly. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, this time, uh, let us